Hello and welcome everyone. Today we will discuss about recent updates, recent changes in NRP 2025 9th edition. So in 9th edition AAP, they have made some changes as compared to 8th edition that specific changes we will discuss. Around 10 to 12 changes are there that we will discuss in 10 to 15 minutes briefly. We will not go into details of NRP, only changes we will discuss. So first change they have made in algorithm itself. So in algorithm, they have introduced one more point, initiate code management. So after birth, before assessment of the baby, initiate code management, they have made one goal. So after birth, initiate code management in the first one minute. Second change they have done in initial steps. So initial steps, from initial steps, they have removed suction. So previously in initial steps, suction was there, but in new NRP, they have removed the suction, dry positioning, stimulate, and clear the airway if needed. So they have made it that clear the airway, we can wipe out only. So if required only, so routine suction is not recommended, only if secretion is there, we can clear it. So these two changes they have made in algorithm itself, initiate code management, after birth and no need to routine section only clear the airway if airways secretions are there so in in on with ongoing studies and trials they make some changes in the neonatal resuscitation and they have found that routine section was not needed in sometimes that can cause vagal stimulation and bradycardia in the babies and second, in code management, they found that recent trials showed that there is so many benefits of uh, delayed code clamping. So they have emphasized on the code management. That's why they included in the algorithm itself to emphasize the delayed code clamping. Second change they have done that in terminology, they have changed from PPV to ventilation. Previously, in previous algorithm, if baby is not improving after initial steps, then start PPV, positive pressure ventilation. But now in new 9th edition, they have made it. If baby is not improving after initial steps, if still baby is apnea or gasping, then start ventilation. So they have told that our purpose is not to give only positive pressure. Our purpose to ventilate the lungs. Because ventilation is the most effective and most important step in neonatal resuscitation. That's why ventilating the lung is more important than only providing the positive pr pressure ventilation. That's why they have changed terminology from PPV to ventilation. Next in delayed code clamping previously was 30 to 60 seconds. In 8th edition it was delayed the code clamping 30 to 60 seconds. Now they have made delayed the code clamping at least 60 seconds. So at least one minute they have made it from 30 to 60. So now 60 seconds delayed code clamping duration. Next is code milking. So in Previously in 8th edition, that was written that only less than 28 week gestation code milking is not recommended because increased risk of IBS. Otherwise more than 28 weeks we can do according to previous edition. But in this newer edition, they have categorized in three categories. That if baby is more than 35 weeker, if baby is more than 35 weeker and baby is non vigorous, we can go for code milking and uh, we can go, we can do code milking. But if baby is between 20 to 34 weeks, still there is not enough evidence to recommend routine code milking. If baby is less than 28 weeker, it is not recommended. So before 28 weeks, it is not recommended. Between 28 to 34 weeks, still evidence are not enough. Only more than 35 weeker baby, we can go do cord milking. Because if baby is non vigorous, we have to cut the cord. So before cutting the cord, just do cord milking and the cut, cut the cord immediately. So this is, they, change, they have categorized in three categories for cord milking. Okay, so this is the change regarding code milk. Next, ventilation rate they have reduced from previously was 42, range was 40 to 60 breaths per minute. So normal respiratory rate of newborn is 40 to 60. But 
in newer edition they have changed its ventilation rate 30 to 60 they have increased the range 30 to 60 breaths per minute why they have changed because in st studies they have found that in 30 to 60 seconds also we can establish effective ventilation and there will be reduced risk of air trapping so if we are we, we are over ventilating we are giving higher rates the risk of air trapping will be there so in this case air trapping risk will be less effective ventilation will be there and that mimic with natural newborn respiration so they have told like this and they have changed from 40 to 60 now 30 to 60 breaths per minute and in during chest compression also we are giving, providing 30 breaths per minute only that that's why they have changed 30 to 60 breaths per minute next is target saturation table slight change uh, change is there now table is starting from two minutes otherwise all the saturation targets are same only but table is starting two from two minutes means at one minute we don't have to see the saturations because at one minute saturation is generally is practical is not feasible feasible also is not there if we are taking also it is mostly incorrect and inconsistent so because the at one minute saturation is incorrect inconsistent and inaccurate and it is not feasible that's why they have changed from one minute to two minutes so now we have to start seeing saturation from two minutes only after birth uh, two minutes after birth otherwise saturation targets are same 65 to 70 at one minute uh, at five minutes 80 to 85 percent saturation we have to reach and start at two minutes previously it was one minute oxygen saturation initial oxygen for ppv how much fi2 we should start so previously was two categories was there more than 35 you could start from 21 percent fi2 if less than 35 you could baby start from 21 to 30 percent fi2 but now they have increased the categories they have made three categories if baby is more than 35 weeker start from 21 percent fi2 if baby is between 32 to 34 weeks start from 21 to 30 percent fi2 if baby is less than 32 weeker start from more than 30 percent fi2 and after starting we have to target saturations and a titrate according to the FiO2. So smaller the baby, higher the FiO2 requirement. So this change they have done in initial FiO2 requirement for positive pressure ventilation. Next, initial PIP requirement also they have changed slightly. Previously was that initial PIP for all babies was 20 to 25 centimeter of S2. But now they have told that all the baby's lungs are not same. Premature baby's lung um, compliance will be less. There was increased risk of ventilation induced lung injury. That ventilation requirement also differs with gestationless. That's why they have changed in, they have categorized in two categories. If baby is more than 32 weaker, we can start from 25 to 30 centimeter S2. If baby is less than 32 weaker, start from 20 to 25 centimeter of S2, initial PIP, initial peak inflation pressure, we can start. And then accordingly, we can increase or decrease for chest rise. So slight change is there according to the gestation of the baby in initial PIP requirement. Next is ventilation corrective steps. So when to start ventilation corrective steps so previously was there that only if baby is not improving after 15 seconds of ppv if there is no improvement in heart rate or chest rise is not there if after 15 seconds we have to start ventilation corrective steps but now they have increased this 15 seconds now 15 to 30 seconds so if baby's heart rate is not improving in 15 to 30 seconds also so up to 30 seconds also we can wait for improvement in heart rate after starting ventilation and if there is no chest rise after 30 seconds also then we have to start ventilation corrective steps so they have range slightly increased from 15 seconds now up to 30 seconds also we can wait for improvement in heart rate or chest rise before starting ventilation corrective steps so next is ventilation corrective steps previously we used to perform in sequential order like mr so PAMR SOPA, MR SOPA. P. In pairs, we have to, we used to perform in pairs, but now they have changed it that no need to go for sequentially. 
no need to perform ventilation corrective steps in sequence or specific order we have to see the clinically we have to see the practically which step will benefit most if baby is having uh, airway secretions oral secretions then directly go to the suction or open the airway why we have to go to mask adjustment or repositioning so in because this this is the practical situation that's why they have changed that no need to go in sequence just prioritize which step will help more and go directly to the that step only for ventilation correction <clears throat> Okay, so these two changes were there in ventilation correction. Next, laryngeal mask airway. Previously, laryngeal mask, mask airway was the alternative airway. Means if baby, we, we are not able to ventilate with the mask or intubation is not feasible or unaccessible unac or maybe trained person is not available, then only we used to go for laryngeal mask airway. But now they have told that we can ventilate the baby with face mask or LMA laryngeal mask airway so they have equalized that face mask and laryngeal mask also because they have found in studies that in laryngeal with laryngeal mask airway we can ventilate babies faster and effectively slightly bigger babies more than 1.5 kg babies we can ventilate the babies immediately and establish ventilation faster and uh, rather than waiting for intubation and for repeated failed attempts of intubation, directly we can go for laryngeal mask airway. So importance of laryngeal mask airway has increased after this, these changes. Next is depth of end endotracheal tube. How much we have to insert? So measurement is same only, nasotracheal length plus one centimeter. Okay, so this how much we have to measure. So previously this length was up to the lip of the baby, tip to lip tip to lip was there but now they have changed from lip to gum so we have to see the number at the upper gum of the baby midline of the upper gum of the baby so up to that length we have to insert the ET tube because they have found in studies that lip position is variable lip position is variable but gum position is fixed so gum is better than lips for this uh, marking. So now they have changed at the upper gum, maxillary gum at the midline for endotracheal tube depth. Next is tube size also they have changed. Previously was simple, less than 1 kg, 1 to 2 kg, more than 2 kg. Or 28 weeks or 20 to 34, more than 34. 2.5 size, 3 size and 3.5 size. Means more than 2 kg. Previously we used to go for 3.5. But now they have introduced one more category and they have revised the categories. Less than 800 gram baby, we can go for 2.5 or 2 also. 2 size also we can go for 800. Previously in NRP, we, we don't need 2 size ET tube. But now we need 2 size ET tube also. If baby is less than 800 gram, we can go for 2 or either 2 or 2.5. If 800 gram to 1.2 kg, 2.5 size. 1.2 to 2.2 three size and 2.2 more than 2.2 is 3.5 size. So previously, if any baby was there, 2.1 kg, we have to go 3.5. But now 2.1 kg baby will go for three size because 1.2 to 2.2 kg three size is there. So ET size actually they have reduced because they found in studies that post extubation strider and subglottic edema was more airway trauma was more with bigger ET tube so slightly they have reduced the ET size for same baby okay so these uh, changes in the ET size next <clears throat> huh, this is the summary of this is the pictorial or graphical representation of the changes in the recent ninth edition NRP. So some, we'll see uh, briefly that suction they have removed, suction they have removed from this. So in this they have shown that suction they have removed now if uh, needed clear the airway. Second, 
ventilation corrective steps no need to perform sequentially prioritize that and order and then go for that and this saturation table starts from 2 minutes umbilical cord clamping is now 60 seconds less than 28 we are not recommended we can go for milking for 35 to 42 weeks between 28 to 34 weeks also evidence is not sufficient okay we can go for laryngeal mask airway for ventilation ET tube depth insertion is now measured up to the gum upper gum of the baby FI requirement is more than 35 weeks 21% 32 34 weeks 21 to 30 percent less than 32 weeks more than 30 percent initial PIP requirement for more than 32 weeks or 25 to 30 centimeter S2 or less than 32 weeks or 20 to 25 centimeter S2 for ET size also they have changed they have introduced less than 800 gram we can go for two size also and like this so they have increased they have reduced the size of the ET tube so these these are the changes they have, they have done in ninth edition of NRP thank you so much